Hello, welcome to the road from uh, Wyoming to Taiwan, Republic of China. The purpose of this show is introduced to our two sister cities, Wyoming and Changhua, Taiwan, Republic of China. Today with me is Honorable, Honorable Mayor Eisinger and Mr. Eddie Sha, Director of Information of Coordination Council for North American Affairs of St. Chicago. As we know, Mayor took the trip uh, in 1983 to Taiwan, and he had a real good time and introduced the people from the area to know the Taiwan Republic of China. Mayor, would you uh, tell us your experience, the road from uh, City of Wyoming to the Taiwan Republic of China? Well, Alex, as you know, you was more or less the instigator of that uh, sister city experience that we had. Uh, it was your idea that we adopt a sister city in Taiwan. And uh, in fact, at the time, I think there was a uh, senator from Taiwan who uh, visited you and suggested that uh, we should have a relationship. Um, that relationship uh, ended up to be a once in a lifetime experience. And uh, we just had such an outstanding time over there. Uh, it's, it's quite a long flight uh, to Taiwan, but uh, our reception there was just out of this world. And uh, I can say it was something that Jane and I and my daughter will uh, remember the rest of our lives. Yeah, that's good. The, uh, Ms. Elisha, could you tell us anything about the Taiwan who would be interesting to the people in this area? Well, uh, first of all, I must say I'm very much uh, uh, delighted and honored to have uh, this opportunity to be in the city of Wyoming and uh, to be with uh, the mayor. And uh, as we all know that uh, the people of the United States and the people of the Republic of China have long friendship. And this friendship based on the understanding that uh, we are bound to have a closer ties in the future. And uh, it's also based on the conviction that our two peoples share the same value of freedom, democracy, and uh, capitalism. Yeah, as you know, there's a lot of uh, similarity uh, between two people, the people from Taiwan and the people from the area, city of Wyoming, and, uh, and people in the United States. As my personal, uh, when there, 83, we, we saw lots of uh, uh, nice people there, they uh, really, uh, dedicate themselves uh, daily on a daily basis to the world community, especially the relationship, you know, to the United States. Uh, one thing, the their lifestyle uh, basically the same, but still there's a, because of two different places and a different community and different, they have a different way of lifestyle. Uh, May, would you tell us a little bit what your personal opinion when you were there the anything difference in the lifestyle people living there and the people living here? Well, perhaps it might be good to just kind of recap a little bit of our experiences. Uh, we landed in Taipei by way of uh, Tokyo, Japan, and uh, we uh, had a tremendous reception. The entire council of Taipei, or the, uh, of our sister city, was there and met us. And uh, we stayed in Taipei in the Grand Hotel for uh, two days, two nights. And uh, we had a tour of uh, Taipei, which is just a beautiful, gorgeous city. And then they took us to our uh, sister city. Now, that's more or less in the country a little bit more. And uh, it's not quite as advanced as what uh, uh, Taipei is. But uh, we was met at the outskirts. We had a parade into town. And uh, uh, they took us to the uh, uh, Buddha Shrine, which is the largest Buddha, I think, in Taiwan. And, uh, and from that day on, uh, well, of course, at that time, then they took us to our hotel, and we was, uh, had a tremendous reception there. But from that experience on, each day was just filled from morning until evening was just a tremendous experience. Uh, the area that we experienced uh, is a little different than our culture. Um, they do not have the land area that we have which uh, was quite foreign to us. Most all of the land is used either for farming or uh, whatever, you know. But, uh, and the shops are real small, much smaller there than what they are here. 
everyone there seems to be much more industrious than what we are over here. But um, uh, I, I just admire the people very much for their industrious uh, nature that they have. And of course, their family life was a little different than ours also, which was something we had to get used to. But um, uh, I, I think it was just an experience that uh, everyone, I just wish everyone could experience, really. Thank you. Mr. Edisha, what do you think? You know, you're from uh, Taiwan, Republic of China. You've been here how long? A year and a half? Uh, just one year. Just one year. For this visit. Yeah, for this, uh, in this one year, can you tell us the different point of view the, as a person from Taiwan, Republic of China, to come to the United States? Well, first I must mention that uh, I first came to the continental United States back to 1958. And uh, since 58 until 1984, uh, I spent most of my time in Europe. However, I was able to come back for a short visit or just stop over from time to time. And through all the years, I witnessed some changes of the United States. But fundamentally, I have a, a great confidence in American people. And uh, I can see the future of the United States of America is very bright. Based on my personal observation that American people as a whole are very patriotic. Not to mention they are industrious, they work hard, or they have a very far-sighted vision. So now let me come back to our relationship. Uh, as I just mentioned previously, that's a long-lasting friendship, but uh, something substantial. Uh, let's come to the trade. In 1984, the two-way trade volume between our two countries reached 21 billion, which placed us to the fifth place as the largest uh, trade partner of the United States. And uh, the United States, to us, is the second largest supplier of our goods and services. So this relationship is very sound. So we think that in the, that's why I will see that in the future, we two peoples and we two nations will come much closer uh, together. Yeah, I believe so. You know, like you say, the uh, so much trading going back and forth between the Taiwan Republic of China and the in the United States, and those trading can really bring the people closer and uh, closer. Um, see, like the uh, this way, both way of trading, uh, the people here can really enjoy the uh, low cost of the merchandise our daily life and also the people there can get the high-tech uh, technology from the United States. Is that right? Well, yes, that is correct. But uh, we, uh, we not only import the capital equipment from the United States and uh, not only the high-tech knowledge, we also import consumable items. So you'll be able to find uh, the Mass Warehouse coffee on the shelves of our our supermarkets. That's just one example. And uh, there is an imbalance of trade for the moment. We're try, trying to reduce the imbalance by encouraging our people to buy American, buy more from uh, our friends in the United States. Yeah, I think that's very uh, constructive. In this point of view, can you tell us how much help the people in there already got from the United States since the after World War II? The people, in, uh, the people in Taiwan, Republic of China, has constructed the country, uh, get a big, nice improvement since the World War II. Yes, after the war, uh, during the war, Taiwan was almost ruined. And then we had to start all virtually from nothing to reestablish Taiwan. And uh, during the first uh, stage of the reestablishment and reconstruction, 
we did have a great help from the United States. With uh, the American aid, we were able to start with uh, PACE. And now later, of course, we are coming on our own feet. But still, we have uh, this trade relationship, and also we have the cultural relationship, and all this uh, have been a great uh, contribution to our development. Yeah, I'm very happy you know, to hear this. You know, the uh, United States really helped uh, the Taiwan Republic of China can construct the country, the community, people can enjoy the freedom and the nice uh, way of life. I think, you can, I think you can notice that, too, in the architecture of, of uh, Taipei, which is a very modern city, wide streets and beautiful buildings. And uh, you can see that it's going more and more toward the American architecture. So you can tell that there's a, quite an American influence in, in Taipei today. And uh, I think, too, that they, have, they are adopting our work standards quite a bit. You know, they're very mechanized. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see the influence there. Yeah, I can tell the, uh, they're sending uh, 100,000 uh, students from the best school in, in Taiwan come to here in the United States study. And the student, after the study, they go back there. Those invisible assets really just like the uh, uh, flower pollen and bring back there, they will start growing. And they will start to uh, build, they construct the, the country, the, the community, like the way they learn here. Uh -huh. What do you think about this point? Well, that's true. It is, uh, you know, there are many, many students who come here. In fact, uh, you was one of those uh, students who came here uh, a few years back and uh, then went back and got Alice and, and brought her over here. And that's, uh, and of course, then you went into the uh, restaurant business. That was a little bit different than you had intended, I guess. But uh, you and I, you, Alice and Alex and, uh, and Jane and I have been friends for many, many years. And uh, we have never regretted the fact that we have been friends of yours, Alex. But uh, you have done a lot for the city of Wyoming also since you've been here. And uh, I might add, too, that since our, uh, since our experience in Taiwan and going over there, uh, the mayor and several members of the council uh, have, been, uh, have, ex have uh, returned visit to our city. And uh, we've had a real nice experience. In fact, uh, just last, uh, what was it, last fall, or la this past winter, there was a group uh, from the Ladies Club of, uh, of Taiwan, or Tai, our sister city of Changhua, come to see us. And uh, uh, they, uh, of course, that was their first experience in seeing snowfall. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just had a tremendous time here. Too. So we try. Uh, you know, very hard to show them the same uh, wonderful time that they show that they uh, you know showed us when we was there. Yeah, I really appreciate this kind of uh, exchange uh, cultural exchange program. See, like the, we went there, see what they, who they are, and what they are, and how they do things over there. And in return, they come visit us to see how we're doing and become closer friends. And uh, and I remember. When they were here, they were very impressed to our wastewater plan, and uh, they would get so excited and you know, try to go back there and get the bill one. And uh, apparently, they haven't got that done yet. Uh, well, they have a long way to go over there. As, as Eddie pointed out, uh, they have started from nothing. Uh, uh, we've been progressing steadily over the years, and, uh, and we have still some projects that are incomplete in this country. But we are much farther advanced as far as uh, streets and uh, our utilities than what they are over there. But uh, they're coming, and they're working very hard at it. And uh, so I would say that, uh, you know, before we know it, they're going to have all, the, you know, the, 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 the streets and, and utilities uh, the same as we have them. But uh, it's very difficult uh, to get everything done all at once. Yeah, I really appreciate the, uh, I've been talking to the city manager, Jim Shearn, and uh, he made a slides program that shows the, uh, all the city uh, facility provided uh, for the citizen in the, in the city. And uh, we're going to use that as the uh, exchange program, show them what we, how our city uh, facility provides to people and how people enjoy the uh, city uh, service. And also, 
the backbone of the, the service come, come from the, uh, the tax income. All the budget and the expenses, and uh, Jim Sharon going to make a program and on the slides so they can show the other people, uh, the city over there, how they generate, how we generate income, and how we, how we, ex you know, uh, spend our money. Well, I, I think, think they're going to be very uh, helpful. Well, I think it's interesting to note too that our individual cities have much more freedom to operate on their own than what they do in Taiwan. I think that the national government in Taiwan uh, has a little more control over the cities and uh, and the officials than what we do in the United States. Isn't yeah. that so? Yeah, at this point, Mr. Eddie Shah, would you tell us how the local government in Taiwan Republic of China operate on a daily basis compared to the local government in the United States? Well, as the mayor just pointed out, that uh, the local government of the United States are uh, more free to operate on their own way. And uh, of course, our mayors and uh, magistrates are elected uh, by popular election. However, the officials who work in the local government are part of the government uh, service. So then uh, they are under some uh, uh, system, central system together with uh, other employees of the central government or national government. So then the system, that says that there is a difference there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we noticed that when we were, well, in fact, uh, we knew that they was coming. And uh, we had planned on them coming for, for uh, I guess, eight days, something like that. And uh, so that was all the time that they could leave the country. Mm. Uh, you know, in this country, we had planned on going over there. And uh, in fact, we could go as long as we wanted, you know. But uh, there, they're still under the control of, of the higher government there. So they could not come any longer than what we had asked them to come. So it was, a, you know, these things a little bit foreign to us. But uh, there too, uh, uh, there's a little difference in our individual uh, council setup also. Uh, they have 20, I think 22, 22. Two, uh, members, members of their council, where we have only six. Uh, so, uh, you know, and the mayor, I think, over there has a little more power than what the mayor here does, too. But uh, their makeup is different, but uh, uh, they do an outstanding job, and it's, it's real fun to experience. Yeah, I think they have a very progressive uh, city uh, operation over there. The, uh, I think a year before, the year when we were visiting, they have uh, one, a 10 million uh, budget for the one year just a road service. Mm -hmm and uh, plus some other services. I th think the both cities' uh, budget in a year are pretty close to each other. Well, ours, uh, our general operating budget is around 11 or 12 million, but then we also, above that, our, uh, our water and sewer budget is above that. So I think our budget is something like, uh, would it be around 18, 15 or 18 million dollars for mm -hmm. the entire operation, which is a little larger than what theirs is. But of course, I think that we do provide more services, uh, and of course, we have more streets uh, than what they do over there. And of course, a lot of our expenses is the removal of snow and, and uh, street repairs, which uh, is something that uh, is completely foreign to them. But uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's completely different, uh, the two cultures, but they are getting closer together than, you know, than they have been, and so it's it's. Uh, I I think it's a real experience to be able to uh, to see the two cultures and then compare them. Yeah, how about the uh, when you talk about the uh, the cultural exchange uh, on the food area? What do you think about the, when you're eating over there and eat here? Can you well, tell that was that was a little different experience because from the time we left here till the time we got back, we had uh, we had no potatoes, and of course, potatoes <laughs> is our is our staple here. Uh, it was rice, and uh, yes, it's it's completely different because here we're two we're used to having uh, pork and beef, and uh, uh, it's uh, mostly fish and seafood, uh, which I guess is much really much better for you, and I think that's why they uh, they're so healthy over there. I think our food is much uh, we use a lot more sugar and uh, things like that, which is something they do not use much of. So. Uh, our food is much different, and I, I have to admit that when I got back, I couldn't wait to have some potatoes and, and a nice steak and, uh, and other food. But um, I guess it didn't hurt us any.
Yeah. Any as you uh, people from the foreign country in this country for a year, what do you think about the food? Well, it's uh, personally, I can take any kind of food since <laughs> I'm all around the world. <laughs> uh, if I go out alone, I eat alone, for instance, then I would take uh, Western food. And if I am having friends at a, a party, no matter how small or how big, then I would take them to the Chinese restaurant. I think that to sit around a round table to share food from the same dish is a kind of a way to achieve a, a better intimacy. No, it's true. That, yeah. uh, that was quite an experience because uh, they had this round table, you know, and everything comes in a bowl. Susan on top. Yeah, and you have your little bowl of rice and you yeah. put a little, you know, yes. which, uh, and it was fun. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. But, uh, of course, it's, uh, the food is entirely different. And uh, yeah, it was a new experience. And uh, I have to admit, there was some of the food that I didn't really uh, mm. appreciate that much. But uh, you have to be... Uh, brave and uh, try most everything and that's what we did but uh, it's it's a learning experience mm. but i do and i enjoy chinese food so it uh, it's not all bad yeah, besides the food what do you think about the housing over there compared to housing in in, in our area well of course over there they have no I, I was intrigued to the fact that they had that there was no need for a lawnmower over here of course we have large yards and uh, well maintained uh, manicured lawns and uh, over there uh, they build the houses very close to the street one room wide maybe two rooms deep and then of course they build up from there so every little piece of ground no matter how small was a rice paddy and uh, they just they live in a much more congested area in fact the, the businesses in our sister city are usually about the width of a garage and uh, that is their business, and then of course they live behind it and, and above it. And so they're always right there in their business. And I will say one thing, they're very industrious because from morning till night they're there in their business. And, and uh, I understand you told me that a, a butcher over there, which I'm familiar with, works, uh, was it every day, every day, uh, has about one day off a month? A yeah, month, one day is off a month, yeah. official. You know, and, often. Uh, and they're usually in the shop from morning till evening. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, I don't know if we could take something like that because uh, we're used to having our days off and weekends off and whatnot where, where they're there, they just, they're just working all the time. Yeah, in this point of view, you know, the, uh, the different lifestyle, like when you work an hour and uh, off hour, here uh, we are tended to think uh, when you're working, it's kind of uh, uh, pressure on there and, uh, you get out the working place, then you're off. Over there, I think they combine together. When you're working, uh, they don't take that, that much pleasure like we have here. So they were kind of uh, combined a day in a working hour and a uh, half hour altogether. Yeah. Uh, this is quite different. Maybe Eddie can explain a little bit. Well, about. I think that this is uh, quite different in the lifestyle, in the uh, idea wise. The China for many centuries was agriculture and uh, coming into industrialized society is quite a recent uh, experience and this experience now exists in on the island of Taiwan so in the agriculture society and people start work when the sun rises then they come home to rest when sun is setting now, when it comes into the industrialized society, then this uh, may not be applicable. However, many people still do the same. So when you imagine the, uh, the situation there, that's for more or less the family style of the business. And when you come to uh, the industries, other industries, then it will be different. They have uh, the work time, eight hours a day, and uh, five and uh, uh, five days a week. That's a little bit more, five and a half days a week. That's the requirement, 40 hours a week. 40 hours? 40 hours a week. I know one of the one, th one time we toured a, uh, a luggage factory and after the uh, working hours, uh, 
we had left the factory part and went up to the, they showed us the cafeteria area of the factory. And as we left this cafeteria area, we went back down past the factory part. And uh, there were still people, there was two or three people working in the factory. Mm -hmm. And the uh, owner or the, the people were saying that these people were working because they did not think that they had put out enough product that day and they wanted to make sure that they were putting out enough product. So these people were working overtime on their own time to make sure that they was putting out enough product, which is completely foreign in here in America because usually we uh, are not concerned about how much we put out mm -hmm. primarily, but when our time was up, then we like to go home. And I thought that was uh, quite a different experience than we're used to in this country. But it is quite different from, uh, from the system you yeah. have here. Yeah. And uh, our system is more or less uh, in Japanese way. So the yeah. Japanese workers, when they are employed by the factory, by the industry, they are considered part of it. Mm -hmm. So the industry or the company would look after not only their wages, their families, welfare, and uh, other things related to their daily living. Well, I guess the school system too, the, uh, the kids over there, I guess, go to school five and a half days a week. Yes. And much longer hours than what our, our kids do. Yeah, and in the... Uh, mm. It's, it's uh, sometimes they claim that uh, um, they might be a little bit too strict with their children, and we could be a little bit too lenient in America. And if there was only a happy medium, I guess that they'd feel that there was a happy medium, they would appreciate that too. But uh, it's something that they're going to have to learn as time goes on. Yeah, it's real nice, you know, we can talk about the differences um, in the similarity of the two community on the education, the eating, um, and the city operation, you know, for the local government. And uh, I think there's more to talk about, you know, the, uh, the get the two city and uh, to see how the everyday function, the city government provides city service for the people. And as the uh, name of city Wyoming, people serve people then we find out what people serve people and uh, what people are being served and what has been served. They, I think they'll be interesting. I've been talking to Jim Sheeran, the city manager. We might take the category on the city providing and then how people enjoy it on the, on the daily life, the food they're eating and the clothing they, they, they wear and the housing they, they well and the transportation every day is people go back and forth and go to the recreation and their uh, public service public facility you know like role service for them and then we go on the entertainment and recreation park department that type of thing i think going to be real nice uh, this kind of uh, a program we will plan getting more more and details and tell the people in this area to getting interest, get, get interest. What I, think, think? I think that'd be good. I think it's good to, uh, I think our people would be interested in knowing how they live, and I think the people over there definitely would like to know how we live over here also. And I think this can probably make, uh, bring the two people in closer and closer. Right. And uh, make the people have better understanding to each other. Right. Thank you for Mayor Harold Eisinger and the uh, Mr. Eddie Shah from uh, Chicago office.